The next chapter on the benefits of science. I want to ask you a question. How has science benefited you? Without looking at the book, I want you to tell me if science has benefited you in any way. What benefits do you have that people maybe 200 years ago, for example, have? Electricity. We wouldn't be able to show this projector. See, how has electricity benefited you? For example, the refrigerator, air conditioning, washer, dryer, microwave, dishwasher, garbage disposal, garage door opener. I still think that's neat to be able to come up to my garage, press a button, the door opens up, or I used to have to, in the rain or something, get out there and open that garage door and get soaked. I like it. Motion detection, automatic sprinklers. The reason my grass is surviving right now is every morning while I'm gone, that sprinkler's turning on the water. Elevators, escalators. Transportation. It's really nice to be able to fly from California. Here in one day, riding a pony or walking would have taken a long time. Cars, trains, inventions as a result of science. Communications. The cell phone is really an amazing thing. It is helping here in the United States, but it's really helping in foreign countries where they will probably never have the money and the finance to, to lay telephone lines in. Cell phones are blossoming even in third world countries. I have here somebody on a keyboard typing in something. The internet, I know there's a lot of filth on the internet, but it is a fantastic tool if you want to learn things. So I'm a very much a friend of communications. Electronics include cameras and calculators and computers and printers, compact discs. Plastics, we call it Tupperware. Latex paints. I think it's neat when you're through painting to just stick your paintbrush in the water and wash the paint off rather than the old turpentine type thing that we used to have to do. How have you benefited from fabric? It used to be when I went to school, if we had to wear white shirts, they all had to be ironed. My wife has an iron shirt in years. I buy the spend a little more money and get the permafrost, take them out of the dryer and hang them up and they look Pretty good, maybe not as good as they should. Shoe soles, polyvinyl chloride pipe, Teflon pans where the stuff doesn't stick to it, polyethylene, saran wrap where you cover things with clear plastic, nylon, carpeting, synthetic fibers and fabrics that have made things much better than wool. Our agriculture, we produce far more per land by our modern equipment. Our fertilizers, our insecticides, our seedless fruit, to how they have developed grapes that don't have seeds in them. I, I sure prefer those rather than the ones we used to have. Grapefruit, when I used to be a kid, we'd have grapefruit. We have like 100 seeds that we have to pick out. You know, in the middle of the seed. Now the seedless grapefruit, how they've developed them, I don't know, but it sure is better than spitting all those seeds. So what I'm saying is we've all benefited from science. And then... Even the beauty products. Hairspray sure beats the old nets. Shampoo, toothpaste, deodorant. Medical field, how has that benefited you? Now, I don't want to be, get from this session, I'm not a believer in divine healing. God is a healer. But there are a lot of people who have been benefited. People, for example, who have had heart attacks, who have to take medicines to keep their blood thin. There are people who have high blood pressure. Their life has been extended because they could take blood pressure medicines and pain reducers. God has been very good to me. I started teaching professionally in 1959. When I went to Bible school here, I taught at McAllister. In the afternoons, I taught there in chemistry. God has been very good to me. I have missed one class because of sickness since 1959. Now, that doesn't mean I haven't come to class sometimes with a headache and tired and not feeling well, but I've been able to go every class but one. Now, I have missed a few, like going to conference, 
Let me tell you about the one class that I did miss. I, in the middle of the night, had such a pain in my back and my side. It was excruciating. And I thought I'd thrown my back out of whack. I mean, it was so painful. I, I actually did scream. It was awful. And I called another instructor and I said, I'm in such pain, could you take my class? I was teaching Corinthians and I knew he had taught before. He not only took my class, but before he came, came by my house to pray for me, which I appreciated. But I have to confess to you, faith or lack of faith, after he prayed for me, I hurt as much as I did before. Now this was early, we started classes at seven, my pain started about five, he probably came through the house about 6.30, I'm not sure at that time, but the doctor's office opened at nine. We got there about 8.30, I and mean, I wanted to be the first one. See him, I was in pain. When I got to see the doctor, he saw me right off, and he, he said, where does it hurt? He said, what you have is a kidney stone. He gave me a shot of something, and I went home, fell asleep, and passed that kidney stone. Whatever he gave me a shot, I thank God for it. <laughs> because I was in pain. Vaccinations. When I went to high school, a lot of the kids had polio. Polio was a crippling disease. Now hardly anybody gets polio because they've developed a vaccine for polio. The x-ray, some of these things we talked about, even chemotherapy has enabled people to have some of their cancer in remission. And things like LASIK surgery, I've always been afraid of it, but I know of a lot of people who have had it have been greatly benefited and are not having to wear glasses. So, yeah, modern medicine is certainly one of the things that has benefited. If you're a, a diabetic, you're probably taking insulin, and it's probably enabling you to function. Bashing scientists is really pretty stupid because we all benefit from it.